the sizzle of hot meat in a cast iron pan. Dishes of fixings crowding the table. That is what comes to mind when I think fajitas. To me, they're a classic dish that I would think has been around for hundreds of years. So I was shocked to find out that fajitas actually came to be around 1970. And even more shocked to find out they were popularized not in Mexico, but in my hometown of Houston, Texas. Hi, we're Madison and Ivan, and this is Experiencer Project. Today we are headed to the original ninfas on navigation, the birthplace of the fajita as we know it. Full transparency, some people say the fajita was invented here, some people say it was just popularized here. Either way, we are very grateful to Nymphas for playing a part in bringing fajitas to us throughout the world. I feel like these have to taste incredible to have caused a nationwide craze, so I am super excited to try them. This is a frozen Nympha Rita. Nympha's famous, I think I even read this is like the most famous margarita in Houston. So we are enjoying this on this hot summer day. Mm. That hits the spot. It's so cool, so refreshing. Yeah, this is quite good. Good job, Mama Nympha. That's good. That's like a slushy. It's very well balanced. You can tell that there's definitely alcohol there, but Citrus does a really good job of cutting it. That's good. So refreshing. We ordered beef fajitas because it was Mama Nifa putting her char-grilled sliced beef on a handmade flour tortilla at her family's tortilla factory that started it all. Definitely fresh. Also, fun fact, the word fajita actually originally described the cut of beef, also known as the skirt steak. Pico de gallo, fresh jalapenos. Wow. My masterpiece. Mm. Man, outside, that steak is so tender. For skirt's sake, which you know, is not supposed to be the most premier cut of meat, they did an amazing job. That is so soft, it just melts. All the different flavors coming together, the char from the vegetables, the juiciness from the meat, freshness from the, the guac and the pico, really good. That's definitely gotta be one of the best fajitas I've ever had. You can see like the rare piece, like they, they haven't overcooked this meat, which I feel like happens pretty frequently when you get fajitas.
milestone. <laughs> Right. It's all about the quality of the meat and like the cook of the steak. I feel like I've had fajitas with like a more unique flavor, but these just, I mean, the steak is good. It's a, the quality of it, the cook of it, it's perfect. And the homemade tortilla is fantastic, which I mean, Nipa has actually started as just a tortilla factory way back in the day. So it makes sense that this would be one of their specialties. Um, but yeah, I see. I see how this popularized it throughout the country. Because if I tasted this, I would be ordering this no matter where. No slice of meat. I don't think I've ever gone such large piece of steak in a fajita before. And you know, on the spectrum of fajitas, I would say this is lightly seasoned. So it really looks like the. The ingredients speak for themselves. That steak just, I don't know how better to describe it that it's just so steaky. It's not that there's all this like salt and seasoning covering it up. It's just a solid piece of meat. As a kid, I drove people crazy by always asking why, but today I'm reminded to go back to that. Ask why, ask how the things that we see in our everyday life came to be. I'm so happy to have explored the history of one of my favorite foods, to have found that it began in my backyard, and to have tasted the incredible dish that started it all. Next week, we are headed to the place that I always thought started it all, Mexico. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and join us next week. Adios.